Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here. Kim Lepake would like to say a few words. A very few. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'd like to thank you along with Chris. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, it's just a wonderful gathering, and it's exactly as I had wanted it to be. Um, I've seen a few tears here and there, but I'm hoping that this great music will uh, banish all the tears and all the sad feelings, because the music keeps going. Right? Right. Yeah. And you know what? Those of you who, have, who are around here on a regular basis might remember what Jim always said. He said, as a doctor of musical arts, he couldn't do anything about your medical problems <laughs> or your physical ills, but he could always take care of your musical diseases. <laughs> Um, a brief history, very brief. Jim and I first met as we were entering graduate school at the same time at the University of Illinois in Champaign, Urbana. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> who is that? <laughs> we were in the field of theory and composition, music theory and composition. I guess there's other theories too. <laughs> and. As such, we were in a small group of theory comp majors, maybe 10, 12 of us. So we were thrown together a lot. We were there four years. He had been here, there, for his bachelor's degree as well, but I was new to Illinois as a state and as a university. We became good friends. All of us in that small field became good friends. and. As time goes on, went on, I, I came to know Jim pretty well because we were in social and professional and student composer situations all the time. And I knew him to be, uh, to be bright and to be interested in all kinds of things, which, which I liked because there are some musicians who have blinders on and he wasn't one of them. Um, he was also very interested in languages, and if you know Jim, you're aware of this. In fact, as he, when he got his doctorate, he already had a minor, and his outside minor was in linguistics. So that added to his interest in words in general, in speech in general, and, uh, and it just made him more, all the more interesting. Uh, in general, and it has, as part of this band and part of the other musical groups that he's been in, uh, he, he wanted to know about other ethnicities, food, leave <laughs> <laughs> out food, uh, and other cultures and so forth. And his interest in language just added to that. Well, anyway, as we uh, progress through those four years, we did a lot of things. We had we had a couple of semesters of German together. He coached me through the French reading exam that you have to take, and and we had other things such as a lot of ethnomusicology, which appealed to both of us a great deal. And in our at the end of our first year, we were along with a couple of other guys. We were selected to be the uh, teaching fellows. Uh, for the, for the following two years in music theory. And as, as those weeks uh, preceding the second year uh, came about, we spent a lot of time talking about how we were going to teach our respective courses. These were autonomous courses. We weren't attached to a faculty member. Um, we, were each, we each had a course to teach. So we spent a lot of time 
preparing and thinking about it and uh, doing all the things that you do when you're starting out in a field like that. We taught across the hall from each other for two years at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and when we would finish with our respective classes, we'd go to breakfast. <laughs> um, and there we would hash over what we did. Well, how did you do that? What did you say first? Pun intended. <laughs> And it, we just kept critiquing and suggesting and exploring and doing all the things that you do when you first start start teaching. And as such, I think we taught each other how to teach. Okay. Or at least we honed each other's perspective uh, teaching skills. And that was a, f a fabulous experience because it went on for two years and it was um, just like nothing else you do. And in the course of that, of course we became almost so we could read each other's minds because we had talked about this. Uh, I'll tell you that those students had good teachers. <laughs> we knew our craft, but we also spent hours and hours and hours on trying to get it better. And anyway, it was, it was great. Um, another thing about Jim, this will be a surprise to all of you, is that he was funny. <laughs> I discovered that early on. And uh, for some reason, he found that he could make me laugh very easily. And so he spent, I thought, a remarkable amount of time trying to break me up at the most inappropriate times, and usually successfully. When you're in a school of music like that and there's a recital hall, there's always recitals going on and lectures. And he'd grab me and say, let's go hear this. And then he'd sit and say things to me that would make me laugh, and they wouldn't be the time when you should be laughing. Um, and he did other things. His, his humor was very much as you know it, except less mellow. <laughs> A little more, I don't want to say juvenile, but... <laughs> earthy, here's the word. <laughs> I mean, one time there were these winding stairs in Smith Music Hall. Uh, it was an older building with alcoves for statuary. The statuary had been removed. But Jim would get a paper cup full of water, and if he saw me coming, he'd go to the first alcove and strike a pose, <laughs> take a drink of water, and become a fountain. <laughs> Many, 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 I could give you here hours telling you things like that. But anyway, as well as our uh, learning together and teaching together, we also laughed a lot together. Um, and he was a superb teacher. I know that some of you are probably students of his and know, and you know that for yourselves, but through the years, well, I should say, I should back up and say that by the time we got to our fourth year, one, we got married. <laughs> Two, later on in that year, uh, well, first of all, he received a Ford Foundation Award for young composers that awarded, were awarded to 12 composers around the country wow. that would place you in a situation to write for an outstanding high school group. We went to Kansas City so that he could accept the award. We were going to be in Wichita. I won't say anything. <laughs> anyway, that night when we got back, uh, there was a letter waiting for him from the University of Michigan, and sight unseen it said, 
we would like you to come for one year instructorship um, next September. And so, of course, panic ensued. And the next morning, he went around to all of his, all of the professors that he really respected and said, what should I do? And to a man, and they were all men, <laughs> to a man, they said, go to Michigan. So he gracefully got out of the Ford Foundation Award and there were no bad feelings. In fact, the, the head of that program was uh, a man who was a Michigan grad, so he understood. <laughs> so, so we came to Ann Arbor, two Volkswagen bug loads of books <laughs> and a few other things. And he started teaching, and as you can imagine, uh, he was a big hit. He, both his students and faculty, they wanted to keep him. He hadn't finished his doctoral, even coursework yet. All the music stuff was, was taken care of, but he still had history and some linguistics courses and, and so on. So he was trying to balance teaching along with getting those, taking courses in the evening and so forth. Um, and he kept getting nudged by the faculty because he had to get his doctorate in order to stay, not right on the spot, but, so they'd, say, they'd come in and say, hi, how are you doing? And how's the doctoral program? How's it coming? And uh, he finally got a great big frame which he put up in his office with a blank sheet of paper in it on which he wrote, watch this space. <laughs> so, so that helped a little. And he finished all the coursework. We enjoyed Actually, I, I, being in the same field, was able to, I don't want to say coach him, but sort of put questions to him and, and tell him if he was off base or if he didn't say enough or so forth. So he finally got to the prelims, which he passed with flying colors and, uh, and all the other things, wrote his dissertation, wrote a major composition, and got his doctorate. All of that with teaching. <laughs> and uh, after he finished that, then he started getting back to jazz. Mm. So that was a plus for all of us. Um, How long did it take? <laughs> <laughs> well, five years. yeah, I guess five years would be about right. We came here in 66 and he got the doctorate in 71. Yeah. But, and he loved teaching, always. He was a committed teacher, he loved students, really was on their side, wanted to do everything he could to, to help them as much as possible. And he had some advantages. One was that he was astride two aspects of music, the classical side, in which he was an absolutely thorough musician, and the jazz popular music side. And universities in those days were a little slate, uh, straight laced, slate laced, <laughs> about popular music. <laughs> They've come a long way. But anyway, he played jazz, and students like that. They want their their teachers to be able to do things, and they, for the most part, are. And they want to see, they loved the, uh, the combination of the two things that, that made for a lot with his students. And finally, he really helped his students so much. And some of them were also in a, in a popular music field, so they had a, a kinship with him in that way. Um, and the other thing is that he was funny, <laughs> quick-witted, and of course students love that, and so does everybody else. 
Uh, one example I'll give you is uh, at a certain time he was asked to teach the musical theater uh, theory to the musical theater students, some of them. And uh, I think a lot of people didn't want to teach something like that, but he relished it. And these were uh, young men and young women who were in both acting, theater kind of arts, and, and music. And many, many of them were singers. And a huge portion of the singers were women singers also euphemistically known as girl singers. <laughs> that was not a compliment. <laughs> and, and a lot of girl, girl singers have, have uh, suffered, but sometimes deservedly. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of there, there's always been a lot of, especially women singers, who just didn't know enough yet and they were going to make it now, but they weren't really quite prepared. So the first day of class, he went in and he said, what happens when a girl singer comes to the door? She's forgotten her key, and she doesn't know when to come in. <laughs> Some of the young women in the class already gathering their things. <laughs> but his response was, I'm here to make sure you never fit that stereotype. When you finish with this class, you're going to know your keys, when to come in, and a whole hell of a lot. Right. And of course he did that. Um, they didn't leave. And they took him to his word, at his word, and he loved teaching that. And he was able to because he stood astride these two aspects of music and uh, really liked teaching that, that kind of thing and did it for a number of years. Well, I don't want to keep you. <laughs> but he just went on teaching, getting better and better, getting awards and so forth, and uh, never left Michigan. Retired, I don't know how many years ago, but kept on teaching. He had devised a jazz history course. It's now required. Every other year it's offered. And he's been teaching it for a long time, along with his other non-jazz kind of things. In the last 10 years, which would be five courses he's had, Chris, he asked on his own, Chris, to assist him. And uh, that synergy has been great for them. And Chris, I'm sure, can attest to that. Um, Anyway, that, that continued through last winter. He was still teaching when he could uh, through the winter of what would it be, 2018. And in fact, had recently been asked, can you do it next year? Uh, but you know the answer to that. Well, I'm gonna conclude, but I wanna say Relationships have all kinds of, of aspects to them. They grow, they evolve, and there's lots of wonderful things. But the most basic of all is friendship, companionship. And we really had that from the time we were 22 years old. <laughs> and I guess I would like to see you take that to heart and treasure your friendships your relating and companionship in your relationship don't take it for granted amen oh man okay.
Thank you.